with this sort of 360 camera, what I wanted to do was to create something that was a little bit different to be able to help you and the way that you train and the way that you diet. So today's topic is going to look at how to set up your macros. If you scan around the room, in front of me or behind you is a blackboard. This blackboard I'm going to use as a tool to be able to write down everything that I'm talking about. So feel free to scroll around or even move around with your mobile to have a look at the blackboard behind you. Okay, as you can see from behind you, this is step one. Step one is the easiest step that you can possibly do. It's maybe not the most accurate, but it certainly is the easiest. The first thing that you want to do is decide whether you're wanting to cut, so lose body fat or even just weight, or are you looking to gain? Are you looking to gain muscle mass or even looking to gain weight? So for a cutting cycle, you're looking at anywhere between nine and 12 calories per pound of your body weight. With a gaining, you're looking at anywhere between 12 and 16 calories per pound. Now, these numbers are also reflective of how active you are. So if you sit on your bum all day, you would likely go for the lower number. If you move around loads and you're really, really active, then you would go closer to the higher number. Behind you on the blackboard, I've used an example of an 80 kilogram male who is active and looking to gain. So that's 176 pounds times, say, 15 calories equals 2,640 calories. At the end of this, at step four, I'll tell you how to set up your macros. Now to step two. This is probably the second easiest and maybe even slightly more accurate of all three methods that I'm going to give you today. First thing you want to do is if you see on the blackboard behind you, you'll have a, a looking at tracking for seven to 14 days. So track your intake, so track all the food that you're consuming over that seven to 14 days. You also then want to track your weight at the same time. So wake up, go to the toilet, and then weigh yourself on a set of scales. Note all that down. From there, take an average. So take averages of the seven days, or if you do it for 14, take averages of two seven days. See what your weight's doing. See what the calories match to that. Then you can work out whether or not you're looking to cut or you're to gain. If you've lost weight over that period of tracking, then stick to those macros that you've set up. If you're actually looking to gain weight, then you're maybe looking to increase the amount of calories you have. But let's say that your weight is maintaining on the calories that you've been tracking over the seven 14 days, if you're looking to cut, take 10% of off of those calories. And then if you're looking to gain, add 5%. That should be an easy way for you to be able to establish your macros. Final step, which is step three. Now, what you want to do is you're going to find yourself a BMR calculator. So this is your basal, basal metabolic rate. This is the amount of energy that you require just to lie down and do absolutely nothing. You're then gonna work out your total daily energy expenditure. So you take this number you get from your BMR, you'll then times that number by your activity level. So how busy are you? How much do you move around? Do you sit at the office? Do you do generally not too many steps? Then you're looking at the lower number on the blackboard, which is around 1.1, maybe a little bit higher. If you are going to the gym, if you're being relatively active, you're hitting 10,000 steps per day, maybe you wanna go for a higher number, 1.4, 1.5, maybe even 1.6. If you are an endurance athlete or if you're a multi-sport athlete and you need lots and lots of energy, then you're looking at a number of 1.9 times that BMR number. From there, you will be able to establish your base calories. All three of those steps, I'm now going to tell you what numbers you should be fitting into those calories from a protein, fat, and carbohydrate standpoint. The last and final step, which is step four. So you've managed to work out the amount of calories that you have. Behind you, I've set everything out on how you would use these calories based on the amount of protein requirement, the amount of fat requirement, and the amount of carbohydrate requirement. So the first one you want to set up is protein. So as you can see, that is two grams per kilogram of body weight. That's just a simple way to work out protein. Let's not, con let's not consider body fat percentage for now. That for an 80 kilogram male on 2,640 calories, will work out at 160 grams of protein. Number two is then work on to fat. Anywhere between 0.9 and one gram per kilogram of body weight will likely be sufficient. So I've taken the number of 0.9 based on the body weight of an 80 kilo man, that's 72 grams of fat. What you then want to do is work out the amount of calories that you're going to have from each protein and fat, add them together, 
minus those calories from the total calories of 2,640, and then you come up with 338 grams of carbohydrates. So as you can see, that is how to set up your macros using three different methods to establish calories. And then the final method of working out how much protein, fat, and carbohydrates you require. If you found this interesting, found this fun, again, look around the room, see what you think. This is 360, so it's quite cool. Please let me know if you have any more ideas about what you'd like to see or what you'd like to learn about. Maybe you'd like to learn a bit more about tracking. Maybe you'd like to learn a little bit more about weight training using this kind of cool new method of stuff. I'm covered in chalk. Enjoy this and everything's been relatively informative. Like I said, any feedback in the comment section below would be much appreciated.